Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case 69. Here we have a coronal and a sagittal CT image through the knee showing a lesion in the proximal fibula. And the question that I have is, what type of matrix is being produced by this lesion? Is this a lesion that has chondroid matrix, osteoid matrix, fibrous matrix, or fatty matrix? What type of matrix is being produced by this lesion? So if we take a look at this image, and I want to come back here to the to this image here. Notice that there's punctate flocculent increased density, you know, kind of pinpoint density along the proximal fibular metaphysis. Okay, this is very characteristic of what cartilage tumors are, right? The rings and arcs matrix mineralization, flocculent punctate rings and arcs stippled type of increased density, which is very typical for a chondroid tumor, such as an enchondroma. So the best answer here would be chondroid matrix. And this is interesting because if you take a look at this, you know, presumed enchondroma, take a look at the cortex here, uh, kind of inferior to lesion. Notice the nice thickness of the cortex here. But then as we come here at the lesion, the cortex has become very thin and you know, the outer part of the cortex is known as a periosteum. The inner part is the endosteum. And notice that there's, we call this endosteal scalloping. There's a lot of endosteal scalloping from this lesion. So this could be a harboring sign that this is not in fact a simple enchondroma, but maybe a low-grade chondrosarcoma. So just important to keep in mind. But the answer to this case is, of course, chondroid matrix. And I'll talk a little bit about what an enchondroma is. An enchondroma is a benign cartilage bone tumor. In fact, it's the second most common benign bone tumor that we see. And the location is usually metaphyseal, as you saw in our index case. Remember, it was in the proximal fibular metaphysis. It can be metadiaphyseal as well, but it's it's usually central. It's not usually an eccentric, uh, in not, it's not an eccentric location as in like a non ossifying fibroma or a fibrosanthoma or a fibrous cortical defect. That's usually an eccentric lesion. This is very central. And 50% of these happen in the hands and feet. Okay, so that's by far the most common place you'll see an enchondroma is in the hands or feet, but you can also see it in the humerus, the femur, and the proximal tibia in that location, in that locate, in, in that order, excuse me. So hands and feet 50% of the time, then the humerus, then the femur, then the proximal tibia. These lesions produce cartilage. Again, flocculent, punctate, rings, and arcs. That's what they're describing. They have a very characteristic appearance, just like you saw in the index case here. Now, I think it's also important to take a step back and just talk about, well, how do we evaluate bone lesions? Because many residents and fellows and med students uh, sort of struggle when they're talking about bone lesions. The most important thing by far is the location, 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 location. Well, where is it? Is it in the spine? Is it in the axial skeleton, the appendicular skeleton? If it's a long bone, is it in the diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis? All those are going to change your differential based on where the lesion is. So the location of the lesion is by far the most important thing when talking about a bone lesion. Very important, okay? And then the matrix and the mineralization is very important, right? The matrix, what do we mean by that? The matrix is the material that's being produced by the lesion. So in the case of our lesion, it's chondroid. It's producing cartilage. In the case of osteoid lesions, it's producing bone. In the case of fibrous lesion, it's producing fibrous tissue. In the case of fatty lesions or lipomatous lesions, it's producing fat, right? So that's the matrix. The mineralization is the calcification associated with that matrix, okay? So that's what we mean when we say matrix mineralization. Is there any periosteal reaction? And if so, in our case, there was no periosteal reaction, but if there is, is it uh, benign appearing or is it aggressive appearing, right? And, you know, things that aren't worrisome are smooth, sort of solid periosteal reaction. More aggressive periosteal reaction would be something like a sunburst or a Codman's triangle, right? Something that we see in like, you know, osteosarcomas or Ewing sarcomas. Describing that periosteal reaction is often very important and helpful when evaluating bone lesions. Is there a soft tissue component to the lesion, right? Is there a soft tissue lesion or a mass that is ex extending beyond the bone? Because if that's the case, that's a sign of an aggressive lesion, Okay. Are there satellite lesions? Are there other lesions that are occurring in the bone or in neighboring bones? So osteosarcoma has a, a predilection for having satellite lesions, not just one lesion, but there may be other additional lesions. Also in metastatic disease, you can have multiple satellite lesions. Are there any other ancillary findings? Is there lymphadenopathy associated with the lesion or you know, in the surrounding tissues? 
So all these things are very important when we evaluate bone lesions and talk about bone lesions. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, this was a case of a simple enchondroma. It may have been a low-grade countersarcoma. I honestly don't know because I actually didn't biopsy this lesion, so I don't know for sure if this was an enchondroma or a low-grade countersarcoma. But the findings in this case are suspicious for a low-grade countersarcoma because of the endosteal scalloping. If the endosteal scalloping is more than two-thirds of the thickness of the cortex, that's a, a bad sign that this could be a low-grade chondrosarcoma. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.